All right, we'll try and stay on time and, and get started now with our first after lunch speaker. Um, Shane Wellendorf from Tall Timbers is gonna talk about, um, it says something else in here. Global, global <laughs> adaptation, are you talking about people's Global response? adaptation, absolutely. And people's response to climate change? I'm all over it. I'll get out of here, you talk about that. <laughs> Thank you. Well, glad to see so many of you come back after lunch. Um, my name is Shane Wallendorf, and I'm the Land Conservancy uh, Director at, at Tall Timbers. And while I will try to get a global spin to my uh, talk, it will be a little bit more uh, local. And um, I want to talk to you a little bit about opportunities for land conservation. And, and hopefully, I can make the case to you that we really are in unprecedented times and have amazing opportunities in front of us um, in regards to land conservation. And I think for many of us, we can find a tie to conserving land for the good of the future, whether you're interested in history or wildlife or, or resources that we need to survive. How many in the audience are familiar with these two books? Raise your hands. I love these books. Uh, in particular, um, The Search of the, As the Asilla um, by Balfour. Um, I was fascinated um, by this book. So I'm a little sheepish to admit this, but I'm not a Floridian. I'm not even a Southerner. I'm a, I'm a transplant. I'm a Midwesterner uh, by birth. Um, and uh, when I moved here, I, I came to Tall Timbers to do uh, game bird research, and um, but I was really, you know, looking to find something to get excited about and to and to, you know, really get passionate about. And I came across Balfour's book. And for those of you who are familiar with it, um, it's a, you know, it's a journey. It's it's a journey in many ways. It's a journey from the top of the Osceola all the way to the Gulf. It's also a journey through time. And I found this book fascinating and mysterious, and it really caught my attention. The other book um, that's here is the Osceola River that's put out by Tall Timbers, and it also does a really excellent job of capturing a little bit of that mystery in the things that make the Osceola unique. So it's very easy for me to get passionate about land conservation when it comes to the Osceola. And I love to spend time on the Osceola. And what's been cool to me is to go to the same places that Balfour went to and others that have documented it and see how things are really very similar. And when you talk to other people, there are sections of the Osceola River where the public can access where it's essentially the same as it's been. And I, I love the fact that um, I, I, I have solace in knowing that you know, these, these sections of the river can, can remain basically the way they've been for a really long time. Uh, one of my favorite places is the Slave Canal. And uh, this is one of my favorite co-pilots. This is my daughter, Hannah. Um, let me see if I can get the pointer up here so that the people on the uh, Zoom can, can see it too. Um, and uh, for those of you who've had an opportunity to kayak or, or canoe down the Slave Canal, um, it really is a, a feeling like you're going back in time. And so, you know, these are these kind of rare and special places that you gravitate to and you want to, you know, you want to see conserved and protected for a really long time. So a little bit more about Tall Timbers. I think many of you are familiar, but there may be some uh, that are not. Uh, we've been around since 1958. We're a research station. Many of you probably know us for our prescribed fire research. And uh, the home of fire ecology prescribed fire research happened right here in the Red Hills uh, at Tall Timbers. But we also do wildlife research, quail, turkeys, but also a lot of non-game species as well. But we're also a land trust, and we've been a land trust since 1991, and we hold conservation easements on private lands. That's primarily what our land conservation work has, has done. So here is a, a map of the Red Hills, and Tall Timbers has two properties that, that we manage. 
Um, and that includes uh, toll timbers that's over in Leon County, right on the Florida Georgia line. You see the Florida Georgia line here. And then uh, Livingston Place, uh, which is 9,100 acres in, in Jefferson County. And also right here on the, on the Oscilla. So you see lots of green blobs and lots of brown blobs. And these are different um, land ownerships. Um, the brown blobs that you see and many of the green blobs that you see, especially along the Florida Georgia line, are these historic hunting properties that um, blanket the Red Hills. And it's about 450,000 acres that are right there. Um, and then down along the coast, as you go to the bottom end of that map, you see these large expanses of public lands, including the Apalachicola National Forest and, and, uh, and uh, the Asilo Wildlife Management Area in St. Mark's. But the takeaway here is that everything that you see in green are permanently protected lands, and everything that you see in the upper part of the Red Hills there, almost all of those protected lands are in conservation easements. And let me see if I can get this door. So these, these green areas in here are conservation easement lands that are, that are held by tall timbers. And, you know, you can see how the Red Hills is unique than a lot of places in the south and even a lot of places in Florida. This is just going down U.S. Highway 27 in Jefferson County. But you see these open pine woods and these very diverse um, understories. Um, and that's from the, these pine savannas have been managed this way in order to, to maximize wildlife. And they, it's unique and special. This is just north of the little town of Miccosukee on Highway 59. Again, mature longleaf, very diverse places that you don't see anywhere. This is just south of our office on U.S. Highway 319. So, you know, these historic hunting properties is definitely what Tall Timbers is most known for and, and where we've done a lot of our conservation work in the past. But, you know, while we've been very successful in working with private landowners to do conservation on those hunting places, properties, um, our board and the organization and staff had, a, had an interest in broadening our conservation efforts um, and to really take more of a watershed approach um, to this. And um, these watersheds really are what gonna link our conservation lands together. And we wanted to connect with more landowners. You know, Tultimers is blessed with a, with a great suite of members and landowners that we've worked tightly with and have a very great relationship, but there's a lot of our region that, um, of landowners that we haven't really had an opportunity to work with. So uh, we really wanted to expand this and even expand this to do more than just land conservation work, but land stewardship as well. And then to build our partnership base, to work with other nonprofits, work with our state agency partners and work with others. Um, in order to get um, land conservation done and to, to help landowners with their properties. So our efforts to expand our, our conservation um, footprint or our conservation work in the, in the region is aligned with some really audacious goals. Um, America the Beautiful Initiative, this uh, has been around um, a couple of years now. And this is a push to conserve 30% of the United States by 2030. That is an audacious goal when you think about it, right? And how significant that, that could be. About 12% of the United States um, is, uh, is um, permanently protected now. So we've got a long way to go across the United States. E.O. Wilson, one of the preeminent ecologists and naturalists of the 20th century and, and uh, uh, an individual that left a lot of impression on me, his take was we need to conserve 50% of our lands, not only for wildlife and for, uh, for diversity, but for people. Because without that land conservation, we will not have the places we need to grow food and fiber, and we won't have the diversity that we also need in order to thrive. Um, and then the Florida Wildlife Corridor. This is a movement that is gaining tremendous momentum. It's been around a long time. Um, Reed Noss um, promoted this, and, uh, but it's taken a real foothold and it's, it's growing momentum. But when you look at it, the Florida Wildlife Corridor wants to protect about 52% of Florida in order to meet its objectives. So these are really big, audacious goals. The reality is that in order to reach these goals, we're gonna have to do it through private land conservation. 
So I wanted to talk just a little bit about conservation easements um, so that you all have a, a kind of a basic understanding of, of what they are. But a conservation easement is a type of deed, essentially. But what's different about them is that they run with the land in perpetuity. Um, and it is an agreement between a landowner and a land trust or a public agency. Um, and what that conservation easement does is it's transferring a portion of the property rights to an entity like Tall Timbers. And those rights that are getting transferred are, are meant to safeguard the conservation values of that property. So it's going to limit um, certain uses of the land. It's going to limit your ability to break it up into little tiny chunks. It's going to limit your ability to put in uh, industrial uses or very intensive commercial uses. Um, but it still allows for plenty of other opportunities for compatible rural land uses, growing trees, agriculture, managing land for wildlife, et cetera. Um, a conservation easement is only a subset of the rights that get transferred. The landowner still owns it. He still manages it. It's his to take care of. The easement just ensures that those conservation values are protected. And the other thing is, is that an easement does not provide public access. A conservation easement is uh, owned by that private landowner. Um, it's just ensuring those conservation values are being protected. So while the public does not have access to this thing, we're gaining a lot of great indirect public benefits from this. We're knowing that our wildlife are protected, our water is being protected, et cetera. So, Let's talk a little bit about Florida's conservation success. I, you know, when you look at it, Florida's impressive. When you talk with folks from other parts of the country, they're amazed at the amount of conservation land that has been done in, in the state. 31% of Florida is permanently protected, which is an amazing achievement. This is over 30 years of the state uh, putting dollars into conserving land. It really is an amazing achievement. But notice how almost all of it is in public ownership, which is great. I love public access as well, but it does begin to become a, a significant burden on the state to be able to manage and, and to own those lands. Conservation easements are only a sub, uh, subset of that. So when you look at the America the Beautiful initiative, you're thinking Florida's pretty good, but if you drill down there, you see that things, um, it's spotty still. So I'd like to take just a, a county-wide perspective, and you can see just even within our little region right around us here uh, how things vary. Uh, Jefferson County, about 30 percent, um, and you know over 8 percent of it's in conservation easements. Same with Leon County, uh, 37 percent. A lot of that is tied up with the Apalachicola National Forest on the western end. But then look in Madison County. Look in Taylor County. Very different, right? Just under 4% of Madison County is permanently protected. And Taylor County, this one surprised me. I actually went back and checked my numbers. But only 14.5% of the county uh, is permanently protected. Um, so we have these places where I think that there's real opportunities for, for land conservation. And you look at it um, within the Osceola watershed. Um, you see that um, even within this, this watershed um, that we're all so much interested in, that um, only 18.9% uh, of the watershed is protected. Now, what's cool is that a lot of that is focused in on the Osceola shoreline. I mean, if you look at it, it's over 80% of the Osceola shoreline is in permanent conservation, which is spectacular. But as we all know that the river is important, but the whole watershed is important as well. And you can see these big white area gaps um, that are in Madison and Taylor counties, and even as you go over to, to Monticello here. So there's some really, some really great opportunities for land conservation in that part um, of this watershed um, that can, can help with long-term conservation. So people often make these audacious goals, but they don't put any money to it. But I will say that that has not been the case this time. Um, there is a crazy amount of money that is being put forth for land conservation. 
the Inflation Reduction Act, um, this is only a small subset of it, but this is dollars um, that are tied to land conservation and natural resources management. And 4.9 billion is going to the Natural Resources uh, uh, Conservation Service uh, program through the 2018 Farm Bill and 8.45 billion going towards land management. These are crazy numbers. This is huge numbers. And these are an amazing opportunity. This is, this is Congress and the federal government saying, we want land conservation to be a priority and we're gonna put money out there to get it done. This is an amazing opportunity. But I have to give credit to the state of Florida because they have stepped up um, and really shown an interest um, in land conservation. And you all were part of that. If you voted in 2014 for Amendment 1, um, that ensured that we had um, dedicated funding for land conservation uh, based on uh, document stamp tax revenues. Um, and it has the ability to generate anywhere from 600 million to 1.2 um, billion that's gonna be dedicated towards land conservation and natural resource management. And then uh, our rural and family lands program, which is run by the Department of Agriculture here, um, they had 300 million. So this is really an amazing amount of money that um, is being dedicated towards land conservation. So, Tall Timbers, uh, in an interest to trying to, again, expand our conservation interests uh, in, the, in the Osceola, um, we um, pursued a Natural Resources uh, Conservation Service Regional Partnership Program grant. I promise I won't say that all out every time. An RCPP grant. Um, this is a five-year grant. This is where some of those dollars are coming from um, that, that I just pointed to into. And we took this watershed approach, focusing in on the Isilla and the Wasissa rivers, as well as the St. Marks and the Wakulla rivers. And its intent uh, was to work with partners, partners like the Isilla Research Institute and others, our state agency partners, um, and put dollars out on the street for land management and for conservation easements that are dedicated just for these two watersheds. So, uh, one of the things that we've been working on now for two and a half years, going into our third year, is to help landowners in these watersheds do um, conservation practices on their property. And three, amongst many, that are available for, for landowners is to be able to do forest stand improvements that um, are meant to improve quality of forests and to be able to restore them back into a relatively natural state that um, can be productive for wildlife and productive for timber production. Um, and this before after image really gives you an example of how um, taking a land that has had little or no management for decades can be cleaned back up and, and have some real opportunities for, for um, broader diversity. Uh, we also support prescribed fire through this and reforestation opportunities. There's a lot of funding out there right now for planting trees, and no surprise is our interest in forest carbon increases. So I'm sure many of you saw the table downstairs, Tyler McMillan and Nelson Ball and Kyla Lenahan um, are around, and they can answer any of the questions that you may have about um, the RCPP land management and grant opportunities there. Um, and it really can cater to a very broad spectrum of landowners as long as they're in the watershed and they have an interest in these, in these conservation practices, um, there, there's an opportunity there. We have a deadline coming up, it's uh, November 17th. So if this is something you're thinking about for next year, um, go see these guys. The other part of this is um, funding support for conservation easement. And this grant allows for a partial purchase of a conservation easement. So these are dollars that are gonna be funneled through the government to Tall Timbers to the landowner to help purchase a conservation easement at 50% uh, of, its, of its value. So just to give you an example of how this might work, let's say you've got a piece of property with 
uh, land value of appraised land value of $4,000 an acre, and an appraiser estimates that the conservation easement is worth $2,000 an acre, we can get funding through this RCPB grant to pay the landowner $1,000 an acre um, in order to, um, to, to pay for their willingness to, to um, contribute this, this conservation easement. That other 50% can be donated for which there are tax incentive as well. Um, we've worked on three projects now, all of them in Madison County, all great projects that are helping to support our conservation efforts um, in the, uh, in the um, Asilla watersheds. Um, and um, I think that um, you know this is a real opportunity for us to bring uh, conservation easements into parts of the watershed that, that haven't been um, really an opportunity before. So we're starting to talk with landowners now about conservation easements for 2024. So if it's something you're interested in, again, see the guys downstairs um, or give us a call at Tall Timbers and, and um, we'd love to talk with you. And this is contact information for Leslie Elmore um, who can help you with that as well. So let's talk about some of these other opportunities here. And Florida Forever um, really is the big one in, in the state. Um, and for the last three years, the legislature has put $100 million into, specifically into Florida Forever. They've even put more money out for various specific areas and specific projects. Um, but this is, a, this is a hell of a lot of money and you can buy a lot of land using conservation easements um, when, you're, um, when you're pursuing Florida Forever. A couple of takeaways um, though is that um, uh, the good news is that Florida Forever buys that conservation easement at 100% of its value, uh, but the state of Florida holds that easement. They are the easement holder, not tall timbers. Um, but it's a process. The Florida Forever process is thorough, it's rigorous, it's scientifically based, but it takes time. It takes over a year to get through that whole process. Um, and um, even though it's a lot of work, it's worth it because you then have an opportunity to pursue these dollars. Um, this is great. You know, like I showed on this previous slide though, that amended Amendment 1 funding is only going to be around till 2034, at least where it's going to be earmarked. So now is a golden opportunity to, to pursue Florida Forever. It's something you're interested in. One of the things that we've been doing at Tall Timbers is to help landowners get into Florida Forever, get through this year-long process. Um, we've submitted five different applications, um, many, many landowners, just shy of 50,000 acres that we've um, worked to put into to conservation. Uh, one project in particular was really focused specifically in on the, the midsection of uh, the Oscilla, and its idea was to fill in gaps around those existing conservation lands. And this, this was 18 landowners, um, over 18,000 acres, um, that are now in, that in Florida forever can compete for these dollars. So we're really excited to be helping um, landowners that are in and around the Oscilla be able to pursue Florida forever funding. And again, just to, to give you some context, I mean, we, it can be a variety of properties um, that, that can pursue Florida Forever funds once they're on the priority list and they can be as little as 100 acres and we've got one landowner that's almost 9,000 acres. Um, but anywhere in between, we need to see great conservation value and again that interest in, in, in doing land conservation but um, you know we can, we can help a, a broad spectrum of, of landowners. The Florida Wildlife Corridor is another source of funding that um, the Florida legislature put out there and two years ago they approved 300 million specifically to support the wildlife corridor, the Florida Wildlife Corridor. And you can see how the Oscilla is critical to the Florida Wildlife Corridor in our region and you see these areas that are in that yellow color um, in here. Those are all part of the Florida Wildlife Corridor and um, by having this other set of funds that are earmarked just for the corridor, um, you know, we can, we can pursue these projects. It's through Florida forever, um, but again, it's, it's just another pot of money that we can utilize. 
And you can see where a floor, a corridor concept and a watershed protection concept can go hand in hand. One other project that I did want to talk about um, that's been at least exciting for me and many of us at, uh, at Tall Timbers and I think trying to show how we're expanding our conservation efforts to be thinking more broadly to be able to help a broader suite of landowners and resources is the Floyd's Mound um, project. Um, this is a property that um, the Osceola Research Institute is very familiar with, done great research out there, published research already. Um, you know, this is one of those unique places um, in our region that hold a lot of potential for helping to better understand our story um, back in time. And this is a property that came up for sale and folks from ARI approached Tall Timbers to see if we could potentially help. Um, and, uh, and so Tall Timbers has now acquired this tract and we're interested in, in finding a conservation outcome for this using basically what they call a, a buy, conserve, sell approach where we buy a piece of property, we hold it, we find the right conservation partner or buyer and then sell it. So at this point, we um, are pursuing Florida Forever dollars um, for it to be an acquisition um, by state historical resources. Um, the Department of State actually does have dollars and has the ability to do land acquisitions. Um, so we're excited by this project. We're excited as an opportunity for Tall Timbers to be working uh, with ARI and working with Division of Historic Resources uh, in Florida. And, and hope to, to do more. So just to wrap up, um, you know, there are just certain suite of landowners and properties I think that are the, the best fit. First and foremost, it's a landowner who has a love of land. And whether that love of land is because you planted those trees or it's a fifth generation property or you know you farm that property, or you know it's where you saw your first prothonotary warbler. Uh, love of land really matters because honestly, land conservation is a lot of work, and you have to be willing to go through the process to get to the end. Um, and uh, and so you got to have that really love of land. It rarely works. It rarely works as solely a business decision. It really does need to be more than that. Um, you need a landowner who's willing to vision conservation beyond their ownership. You know, again, easements run with the land, and, um, and so um, they've got to be willing to, to give up um, at least a little bit of something um, that, that, you know, is going to run with that land um, in perpetuity. Um, tax incentives are a great motivator, but not everybody can, can, can utilize the tax incentives. But if you are, again, easements may work. Properties greater than 100 acres, it's all about an economy of scale at that point. You get larger than that and the math can work a little better um, for you. The smaller they are, the harder it is. Wetlands, other natural habitats, um, you need to be willing to marry your property to a land trust. It's a, it's a marriage without divorce. So it's a big commitment. And, um, and so, you know, you need to have a comfort level with doing that. Um, and it does really limit, you know, your abilities. And I will say that if we're pursuing purchased easement options, patience is a virtue, absolutely virtue. So, you know, I think just to wrap this up, some takeaways. We are really at an unprecedented time for funding. I mean, this is the amount of money that's available right now is, is, um, is amazing, but it's not going to be around in five or ten years. I don't think that these, these kind of funding numbers will be there. So really now is a unique opportunity if, if it is something you're interested in. Um, you know, I, I, and I think that there's your opportunities out there. Um, you know, this, this is a rare and unique. And no matter what you're interested in, if you're interested in land conservation in the Osceola watershed or really anywhere in the Red Hills, Toll Timbers can help. And we're glad to help and that can come in lots of different ways, whether it's just explaining the process, 
to work through an application with you or to be a, you know, an advocate or a representative for you. We've, we've helped landowners on, on the whole side, of, you know, on all aspects of, of, of land conservation. That's it. <laughs>